Hey everyone, it's Joan Isaias here from The Automator, and I got a really fascinating video planned for you today. Um, Isaias and I, we put a lot of thought into this, and it's going to help you understand if you're new to auto hockey or experienced at different levels, what version of auto hockey you should be using, what editor or slash IDE you should be using, and possibly what course or what you want to be focusing on, what you should be learning, depending on that skill level where you are. So, um, like I said, we've given a lot of thought to this. So in the very beginning here on the far left, you're basically just learning the bare bones basics. Hot keys and hot strings are where most people start. Um, and then you start using variables a little bit with a little bit of logic, right? That's that's a very early part, which is awesome. And you can do so much with that knowledge. Now, because V1 is deprecated, and it's been, what, almost a year now, I think it's been deprecated? Close to it. Um, we can't, in good cautious, I can't say, hey, use V1 version of auto hot key. I think for some people who are hobbyists and you never do anything beyond even beyond basics, if you get to intermediate, you should be using V2. If you plan to use auto hockey for a long time, you should use V2 because V1's going away and no one's updating it, right? Anything uh, you want to add to that? Yeah, at least for now, uh, we don't know of anybody taking up the project. Everybody, all of the developers in the auto hockey forums that are working with auto hockey are focused in V2 at the moment. So that's the reason why V1, we wouldn't recommend it. It's not that it's going to disappear right now. Absolutely. But you find a bug or something, it's not going to be updated. Yeah. But and the, the one thing I will add, though, the V1 is there's tens of thousands of examples in V1, right? And V2 doesn't have nearly as many examples. However, um, it, the, all the new stuff that's being created is really in V2. So, you know, you gotta, that's why we're also saying I'd go with V2. Now, at the moment, as you can see, one of the, we, we do have two recommendations down here. So we recommend, in general, V2, right? But um, for writing the scripts, of course, you can open up Notepad and try to do it in there. But that would be a headache very quickly. And so we recommend simple um, editors like Cypher or Hotkey, which is one of the ones that we recommend the most about this. HK Studio, which a lot of people still use to this day. And it is really great because it has a lot of um, uh, options. The only thing is that it might be a little bit more complex than site for our hotkey. And Notepad++, which has been around for so many years, but there are some people who are used to it. So if you're if you're used to Notepad++, hey, just keep using it for auto, um, coding for auto hotkey as well. And again, we do have courses and the courses that we're recommending um, are in B2. We do have courses in B1 again, but we don't recommend it. And basically at this stage, if you want to start off uh, trying to understand the basics of, of hot keys, hot strings or variables and basic logic, the introduction to our hot key B2 course might be the best for you at the moment. We cover a lot of things regarding that. So uh, we definitely, recommend you looking at that one in particular yeah and click one of the editors just to show them also i'll put the links in the description of this video but um we have a lot of resources on every editor there is like a lot of different we've done webinars on them we have a lot of good resources tools that help you install them when things are breaking um all of the actually no does no plus plus have a v2 version i think it does but um we have our own version of studio that will it doesn't run in V2 because AutoHotKey Studio is actually written in AutoHotKey. Uh, but yeah. we kept the version of it in V1, but it will edit V2 files. So that yeah. one you only get from the automator because we spent a lot of time converting it. Um, it works. Everyone At first it was buggy a little bit. Now it works great. But um, I, I totally agree with Isaias. If you're brand new to learning this stuff, Site for AutoHotKey is by far the easiest, lowest hanging fruit. It works with both V1 and V2. You don't get a lot of the more advanced stuff with it, but you don't need it, right? So sometimes less is better. Just, just if you're just focusing on hotkeys, hot strings, you don't need uh, fancy stuff at this stage. Okay. Which then, as soon as you start creating tools for other people, then things change a little bit because now you have to learn a little bit about loops more than uh, more than the, just the basic logic, right? So more looping, um, using objects and storing data, creating GUIs and stuff like that. That's you're entering a different area at this point. Yeah, and to clarify, so also that first group on the left, I'd say that's usually for people in the first six months on the far left. This next one is six months to a year is where people are usually in, into this kind of area. 
And, you know, it, it's not a hard cut rule, but it's just when you start doing more than the basics, you start using loops and functions and um, you store data in objects, but not necessarily do an object oriented programming, right? That um, And you're creating basic, basic GUIs. Um, that's where we are at this stage, right? So if you find yourself there, um, we really, we, we still, we, we switch over to VS code very early, especially if you're using V2, because by far, nothing is as good um, in AutoHotKey as as VS Code is for V2. It's right. just phenomenal. So for the basics of, you know, when you're jumping from the basics here to using loops and objects, we recommend the intermediate AutoHotKey course. It is geared toward those kind of topics, like how to create your own functions, how to include your uh, libraries that other people gave you and stuff like that. We still recommend you using the same um, editors that you started with if you wanted. But as soon as you jump to GUIs here, um, one of the things that we have mentioned a lot is that GUIs are non-linear. So they're not like, they don't behave in a straight line. GUIs have a lot of things that happen at the same time, or um, they are happening what, without you thinking that would happen. And for that reason, um, especially for debugging purposes, Switching to VS Code at this stage might make a lot of sense because VS Code has a lot of debugging tools that once you learn to use them, of course, it is a steep learning curve compared to the other editors. But once you get the hang of it and once you start understanding how to debug, it becomes so helpful. We have seen a lot of people in our hero groups starting to use VS Code and they're loving it. I actually am surprised that Ray, for example, has been using VS Code and he keeps using it it's not that hard. It's just like it is a Ferrari compared to other things and probably has a lot of tools that you probably don't need. So we don't recommend using it right away. But once you get into more complex stuff, yeah, you will need a lot of tools that it has. Yeah, and um, to back up a step, Site for AutoHotKey, Notepad++, those are both definitely editors. You know, yeah. AutoHotKey Studio is borderline IDE, I think of it, because it does a little bit more than Site for AutoHotKey does, a little bit, you know, cooler stuff. But when you switch to VS Code, you're using an IDE, right? And that's where it's interactively developing in your environment. It's just, it's a game changer in so many ways. It's just amazing. So, yeah. It is to me that some people, for example, people who have been using real IDEs, like, Visual Studio and stuff like that. They don't consider VS Code an IDE, but for us, like as soon as you have integrated things, I consider it an IDE. I would really recommend you looking at the intro to VS Code that we have. That it gives it, it gives you kind of like the basics to start off with. And also, if you're doing any sort of work in a team or with other people, that's where VS Code's integration with Git is just uh, um, hands down. It's it's a no brainer. There's no way to not be using VS Code. So or, or, or something they handle GitHub, I should say. Yeah. Yeah. Anything that has to do with Git, right? Yeah. yeah. So we do have a GUI course. So if you find yourself starting to learn how to build tools that contain GUIs, then you can take a look at the GUIs course. It's really great, actually. We 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 created this a long time ago, like the V1 course. We created it a long time ago, and we jumped it into the V2 which, course. Which the other thing, by the way, and I'm glad you said that, Isaiah, because we both are are no brainer hands down. If you are creating GUIs at all, switch to V two immediately because it's so much easier in V two with GUIs because they're objects and it's just so much more intuitive and easy to use. That is correct. That is true. Now talking about objects, then we go ahead and jump to the next step. And this at this step, when once you're at this stage, I think you're more into the programmer side. Absolutely. So most of the things like. You can create tools for yourself, um, probably for other people as well. Don't worry in there, yeah. Like, like just doing simple stuff. But as soon as you start using your, creating your own classes, connecting to DLL calls from, you know, the Microsoft Windows API or connecting to com objects and doing those kind of things, um, your mindset has to change a little bit. And most of the times you will have to start thinking, like a programmer to make sense of these guys because the people who create those things are programmers and they build it for programmers. So if you're thinking about things like how other people might look at your tool, 
yeah, it's not the same as when you look at a Chrome object or a DLL. That's a totally different beast. Again, at this stage, there's not. I, I wouldn't really recommend anything other than VS Code um, because you can inspect the classes and look at them in a way that it is not going to be possible with other editors. And um, yeah, that's really. Uh, a but then also, the, st switching over to the objects and classes and dot notation, object oriented programming. That's where you really are. Like it was such a game changer for me, and. Um, our, our objects course, right? We have a course on um, functions, objects, and classes. And if you're new to, and, and that one also, if you're learning GUIs, if you knew the objects first, it would be helpful for GUIs, right? But it's not required because Isaiah covers GUIs really well in, the, in our GUIs course. But if you had that background and you plan to really do a lot with GUIs, learning the objects one first would probably make more sense before you jump into GUIs because the GUIs are objects. Right, that is true. So in here, what we're teaching you is how to create your own objects or connect to come objects, right? But when you're starting off with auto hotkey, especially with the GUIs, you're just using objects that were created by auto hotkey. It's not a it's, so so you don't miss anything if you don't look at this course first. But if you understand how classes and objects relate and how you can create your own. As soon as you see a GUI object, you will see what's going on, and it will be it, it will make a lot of sense to you as well. So that's the reason why I agree with Joe in this in this particular point. If you look at the classes first before the GUIs, it will make a little bit more sense. But it's not actually uh, you don't have to do it in any specific order. Whatever you do first, it will make sense in the long run. Now the functions and objects and stuff, we do have the, the, the class for that. And um, so this common DLL is the same um, objects course in here. They're both the same course. But then later on, you will have to move a little bit further. And I, I think, as I mentioned before here, at this stage, you're creating tools for other people and those are GUIs and stuff. So what you're thinking is, okay, is this button pretty enough or is this, Things centered or this. When you jump into the uh, last step here, now you're creating libraries for other developers to use. And at this point, you're actually enabling other people to create Windows apps. So you're basically writing the building blocks of Windows apps. And at this point, you have to understand well, it would be great if you understood. Um, DLLs, com objects, and stuff, because they will make your life a little bit easier when you try to create a library that somebody else would use. And by library, I mean something like um, SQLite. So SQLite is a DLL file that allows you to handle databases. Well, many programs need that databases. So if the person who created the SQLite DLL, that person created a tool for everybody. But remember, Whenever you're creating libraries like this, you're not creating it to the for the end user, so they're not usually like easy to use. They're being built for other developers. So now you have to really think like a programmer because now you have to understand other programmers and build a library that they could use and so on. So for that, I don't think we have a, a course that will take you there. Like the most that we have at the moment is the intermediate or hotkey well, or, or the objects and functions, I'd say, you know, classes. Right. Yeah, all these yeah. guys might take you to a step, but the last step you have to take it yourself, you know? Like, if we can show you the door, but you have to open it yourself, right? Kind of like that. Um, because creating a course, like an advanced out of hotkey course, might be out of the scope of what we actually do. We try to level up people who are starting off with auto hotkey. So our, our main target are people who are starting off, right? Yeah. At the same time, we do discuss those topics in our hero calls, right, on Fridays, because Friday is the more yeah. advanced topics. And, and we have a few developers that are at that level and are in our hero group, and they'll bring up some questions, and Isaiah is really good, so we'll talk through them. Um, other people want to be leveling up, so they like being in there for that, right? But we also in our hero group have a lot of entry level, very, very entry level stuff. So it's a big mix. It is a big mix and so on. Um, so that's the reason why we are actually kind of like letting you know what we have available because uh, depending on what you where you are, there might be some things that are useful to you. 
And even if those things are not useful in the sense of, uh, well, I know all that, but at least we have a community that you can join and we can actually talk and discuss and have ideas or answer your questions and so on. So, all right. So I hope that was helpful. I know it's it's very confusing. You can always shoot me an email. Um, I'll put the email address up here if you have a question about what you you know which course is best for you or which editor depending on your goals. Um, usually, again, it's it's pretty simple. We we highly recommend V two overall compared to V one, but um, the editor wise, Cypherado Hotkey. If you're just starting out, after that, honestly, I would just switch to VS Code. And once you once you realize you're hitting roadblocks and not be able to do things, um, VS Code is really by far the best thing to jump to. That's correct. All right, well, thanks for watching. Have a great day. Cheers.